Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy, and yes, more ornaments. Um, I think I only do one of these with you guys. So this is a glass ornament from Michaels, and what I'm coating the inside with is polycrylic. Um, that's just basically going to give the pigment something to stick to. So you just want to an even but thin coat. So I coat it and then I let it kind of drain out the drippage in a little cup. And then we're going to take a little bit of gum arabic, just a little bit, and we're going to lightly dust just a little bit in a couple of places. So what that does is as everything dries, it creates some really cool effects with the pigment. You can do this without the gum arabic, just so you know. It just makes it kind of interesting, adds some interest to the ornaments. So, um, so that's what I'm doing not very well on camera. And then you want to kind of tap it on the meaty part of your hand so you can spread it around. Now, I do want to caution you, if you get too much in one spot, it does create some difficulty covering that spot and I have done it so many times so you can fix it you just have to wet it down with some more polycrylic and some more pigment but it's better if you can just be sparing with it in the first place <clears throat> so I believe the colors I I'm using here is this is Carmen this is from color art primary elements and I think this is in the wildflower set um, but Whatever colors I'm using, if you don't find them in a set that you want to purchase, you can find them in the Master Color Library on colorart.com, and you can save 15% using Mandy1120. And primary elements work great for these because they are water-soluble, so they mix with the polycrylic um, really nicely, and they create some really cool effects. So primary elements, if you're not familiar with them, they do have mica pigment, but they also have a dry paint. So they're unique. Um, I don't know any other product that's, that is quite like them. They're different than just um, like a standard mica. So that color is Playful Peony, another primary element color. It's a kind of a bright peachy pink. I'm not doing a great job being on camera as usual, so sorry. This video, I'll probably make a couple of ornaments with you, um, just because I've made so many that I have to kind of combine them. <laughs> so this is Bougainvillea. This is a beautiful color. Um, I, I initially started making these with colors that I have maybe a lot of, and then I just was like, oh, I'm going to try a lot of things. So I have, I have a, a spare bougainvillea and a spare carmen. So see where I'm pointing that that's where there's too much of that um, gum arabic. And so I kind of stabbed a little bit with a popsicle stick so that I could maybe put a little bit more polycrylic down there and get some more pigment in there. Otherwise, it's not going to dry very nicely. So this is a pretty small ornament, so I, I think that I think I made two of these. This is a two and a half inch one. So anyway, um, so you see how I kind of broke it up a little bit so that it would dry a little bit nicer. But those colors are just beautiful together. So we're going to put a little interference red in there just to kind of fill in some of those spaces. Interference colors um, are very finely ground mica, and so they work really nicely for filling in spaces. So do the, some of the metallic colors. And I had a, a gold mica out there that I was kind of using to fill in gaps. Um, also wanted to use it up because I have, I have some other mica colors that I don't use as much in pores, and so I figured I would use them up and stuff like this. So that's Harvest Gold. Um, so now this looks kind of funky, but as they dry, they get really beautiful. So that one spot looks crazy, but it will absorb more color. So that's just to give you an example. 
and I hope that I'm going to show you a close-up after 24 hours or so so you can see what they actually look like. Um, they actually turned out really beautiful. I gave them as a Christmas gift to a friend of our family who whose favorite color is red. Because, I mean, those are a beautiful color red, right? So, Carmen color is really quite outstanding. So that's kind of an up-close view. And then here's a little... It's hard to see with the glare, but here's a little close-up for you. Um, in slower motion so you can see some of the detail. Now, where that white is is the gum arabic, and it will fill in as it dries. Um, it's hard to tell now, but really, really beautiful outcome. All right, so here is a close-up of those after like 24 hours. Those dark places are the places where the gum arabic interacts, so it's really cool the contrast it gives. All right, next up we're going to do two small ones with boysenberry, bougainvillea, which we used in the first one, and ember fire. So ember fire is... Um, it's not a primary element. It's actually a blingit color, which means it's pure mica. It's not going to have the dry paint system, so it's more like a metallic color. And it's sort of like an orangey, coppery color, and it is beautiful in ornaments. I can't even express enough. So um, I think I forgot to put the gum arabic in this one af until after I did the first color. So this first color is one of my all-time favorite primary elements. It's called boysenberry. So um, again, if you don't have this color, it is gorgeous and you can find it in the master color library. Um, but it is a beautiful like blue violet and it's, um, you know, I always say this about all the primary elements, but this is one of my absolute favorites. So we're going to do these two colors as our kind of our baseline, the bougainvillea and the boysenberry. Now I probably should have used less boysenberry because it's going to totally take over. But at this point I was still learning. So now um, I remembered that I forgot to put the gum arabic in there so I added it in <laughs> after the color um, which is not ideal but it does still interact. So now we're shaking it around. We're going to tap it on the meaty part of our hand, move those colors around. That's Ember Fire. So if you look for this on the on the color art website, Ember Fire is one of the um, colors under the Bling It section. And it's I think it's part of the, I forgot the name of the set. Um, it's, I'll find it for you while I'm editing this. It's part of the Bling It Metallics. And uh, it's it's a gorgeous color. There's also an Ember Fire Prism Pour color, um, which is really cool. But I have really enjoyed using this color in ornaments. It So the metallics stick to those places that don't cover up as easily with the larger particulates of pigment. But just look at how incredibly beautiful those are. I just made some bigger ones yesterday with um, the same colors. So I gave these as a Christmas gift as well because I just thought they were so beautiful. I only made two of the small ones, um, but I just thought they were gorgeous. Um, so really, really beautiful. Now I sped this up significantly. I'm going to give you a little close up and then at the end I'm going to show you how these look after 24 hours of drying because they will change. But I mean, come on, that is fantastically beautiful. And I can't tell you enough how fun these are to make. It, they're just, like if you're watching a movie or something, they're just a lot of fun to make. They're, they're time consuming, but they're a lot of fun to make. So this will probably be something I do all year to an extent. It would be good to stock up my Etsy store with ornaments. Um, I always think I can do this ahead of time and be ready for the holidays. And then the holidays are insane. And so... <laughs> Nothing ever happens like I plan, unfortunately. So, um, anyway, so second ornament, same thing. The boysenberry goes in first. Um, 
and um, I'm not doing a good job being in camera. I'm sorry. So all I'm really doing is just kind of randomly putting it in there. I don't want it to fully cover, obviously, um, the boysenberry has a larger particulate than the bougainvillea. So the bougainvillea is going to give us probably easier coverage. And that's the other thing when you're kind of figuring this out, you might want to use a balance between like a primary element that has a larger particulate and one that doesn't because the one that doesn't is going to give you better coverage. The larger particulate is going to be very pronounced, but it's not going to give you as good coverage as a smaller one. So I've been doing kind of like a a more fine one and maybe a larger particulate and then kind of making up the difference but with a metallic or interference or both and it's been working really well. I find that more than two or three main colors you're not going to be able to see them so you might as well just pick a couple and go with it. Um, I made some yesterday using Calypso and African Jade and Interference Violet and that was a beautiful combination. And um, so these are some of the favorites of all of the ones I've made so far. And even since then, I really think they're gorgeous. Now you can see where I have a big chunk of that gum Arabic down there on the bottom. Maybe you couldn't see it because I was moving really fast, but um, that's going to continue to absorb. But when you first see it, you're like, oh, I totally screwed this up. But it will continue to absorb as the, the polycrylic absorbs all that color. And that's... One of the reasons why primary elements work so well here is because primary elements, again, are water soluble. So they're going to move around in that water mixture differently than just a plain mica wood. So here's a little close up after right after I did it. And then I'll show you next up um, after like 24 hours after they continue to, to form. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Here they are. Really beautiful. Thanks for watching. Bye.